of the world to the home of the heart moments. We converge in to learn together because when you know better, you can do better. And a better life is what we all want. Better work life, better family life, better personal life. What's up everyone? A very warm welcome to the Benjamin Zulu show. My name is Lily and I just wanted to give a shout out there to our live gang. There are people who are so solidly present yes. every time we go live. We Correct. usually go live on YouTube at 8.30 yep. and I think on Instagram stories as well. Yeah. So I just want to give a shout out to Sharon Merongo, Melvin Mbone, Jay. There's a whole vibrant conversation happening here. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. I try to follow and I'm like... I, I can't even follow. These guys are like brothers and sisters by now. And I can't finish without giving a shout out to Nyakato Violet. Um, let me see if there's a guy. You know, sometimes people get names. You can't tell if it's a guy. Um, Findy, Vicky. Shout out to you all, our live gang. And thank you so much for watching. Um, today we want to talk about signs that a person does not care about you at all. Benjamin, you didn't even want to give us a little, like even a bit. <laughs> you know, we were not talking about a stranger. So we, we are, if it was a stranger, there would be no, no point for conversation. Yeah. We're talking about a person who you think they care, but actually they don't. We are trying to help you because you're already in a thing. Ah. They're already in your heart. You've, you've already put, you think there's a future, if they behave this way, while actually it's the other way. Yeah. Okay. Two ways you are deceived. Sometimes people don't deceive you. It's you who ignore red flags. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> L let me just tell you a story. Yes. One time I dated someone and I was swindled. <laughs> yeah. Slightly. Yeah. But I felt so bad because I was like, but I knew. Mm -hmm. I saw the red flags. Mm -hmm. I know these red flags yeah. so well. Yeah. And I still got in. And um, w one guy I doing coaching with his transitioning to lecturing and he was telling me his passion to teach in college is because he realized people are making mistakes there that are costing them all the way to midlife and beyond when they were young and naive they were thrust, thrust into the world they were full of delusional confidence you know there's real confidence and delusional yeah. <laughs> when you think you know i know my life yeah <laughs> so just as it is with adolescents the pre-25s were very on fire and confident yes it's better when you are, you don't know and you have doubts but when you don't know and you're very confident that's a tragedy so they want to help this person who may not be a pretend five yeah and they are doing more and more investing mm. when they are deluded they are deceived all right so mm. <laughs> so why do we need to tell you about a person who already doesn't care about you because you already it looks like they care you are behaving as if they care they are behaving as if they care you or them or both of you sometimes the mistake is mutual the deception is mutual mm. it's you need them so much they need you so much and very well you're not together but you are behaving like you are and sometimes you are resisting to look that way you know there's something you should look there but you don't look because what will I do? What if, but no, I can't. No, no, there's nothing. We are. Can't, 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 can't. Yeah. So perhaps now we are wrestling your neck to look that way. <laughs> yeah. If you are forcing your neck <laughs> to look that way. Yeah. One of it is something people try to trivialize and it is serial flirting. You may not prove the cheating. When people are entertaining strangers and giving what belongs to the children, giving the children's food to dogs, to outsiders, casting your pals to pigs, call, giving the same special attention to people who are not special to them. You catch once, you catch twice. Because people think flirting is not serious, they tend to excuse it. You didn't work out because you found flirting. Well, flirting is a general blanket term for a lot of things. But by the time I pass on, people are discussing affair has two elements. When there's secrecy and sexual energy, full. That's all. They're talking sexual stuff and they're hiding it. Mm. That's all. You don't need to find them in the act. Okay. Human beings are not easy to trap. So you may never find people flagranted delicto in the very act. You may not. You may, if you're lucky, find evidence of hard, hardcore proof. Yeah. <laughs> not everybody records themselves with video. 
or even unlucky because we don't want to see uh, that. Uh, you know, those are not things you want to see. Yeah. But, but uh, they, they open your eyes. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> <laughs> Shock, a slap. Yeah. <laughs> like you are sleeping slap. comfortably yeah. and somebody, <laughs> you know, rude, rude awakening. Yeah. Do you know, many times what you tell us, what we are putting, what we are putting off, what we are postponing, what we are looking like, it's not that bad, is actually many times the fatal crack. And the fatal crack I want you to pay attention to is this lady entertains other men so much and she acts like it's not, there's nothing to it, you know. You see, and the signs may not be loud to outsiders, but the way you know the both of you, you know that is already crossing your boundaries. Mm. When you try to ask, they call you controlling, they call you insecure, they call you, there's a time we wrote and said, you know there's a problem when the question is polite, but the answer is loud, rude, screaming. I asked politely, in a way that is respectful, is not too imposing. I contained myself just wanting for some information, maybe I'm wrong, but I just ask, a small question, but the answer is big, screaming, energetic, animated, dramatic. People usually have a dramatized scream because they are covering a truth, a real thing. Whenever you try to ask them, so you think I'm there, every time you're looking at my phone, turn to this, I, I am out of this, you can't, you know? Yeah, you're like... And they know you're very invested in the relationship. Mm -hmm. Many times people are cheating, also very insecure with you, because they know you know what they're doing. When people know they're giving you a bad deal, they police you. They know very well they're not giving you a good deal. <laughs> so, yeah. And it's not normal, Lily, for a, no, a grown up to sit and write you 26 message, messages of insults. L l l let's get some things out of the way, yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Here are some things we put up with, though. Y you know. Lily, if there are things in your text that you can't tell the world, that your partner writes to you, you're reading a sick thing. If there's some things they keep putting you down, they sit for two hours, three hours to write you constantly. You have a psychopath for a partner. That's a sick person. No more people are decent, no more people communicate, no more people have a life. No more people can sit there the whole night to scold you. Narcissistic scold is different from quarreling. Ah, no ah. more people quarrel, they get tired, they sleep. The issue gets finished. <laughs> they get tired, yes. first of all. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, more, no more people. I'm tired. Don't talk to me. Now I sleep. So no more people get tired and sleep. <laughs> but a narcissist yeah. can quarrel to 2 a.m. from 8 p.m. Yeah. Can scold and put down and the whole night, nothing new is happening. Mom quarreling people. Can I share something? When yes. I was a child, I remember there's someone who used to quarrel me. And I would see that person's face changing. It would almost become like another yes. energy has come over them. Yes. And the energy is animal-like. Yeah. Almost you, demonic. You are like, who is Hostile. It? Yeah. Hollow. You see their eyes? Damn. Yeah. It's called narcissistic stare. They can change to a something so hostile and inhumane. Yeah. It can traumatize you without them touching you. Yeah. And the way they stare at you, put you down. So those are some of the things that the narcissistic scolding or rage, the narcissistic rage, how they blow up. It is psychotic, abnormal, and... We are saying today, when you have to ask a person why they, you, you bring accountability for why you found them entertaining another person. Crossing boundaries with another person. For the 60th time, 7th time, 8th time, 10th time. It's not a habit. It's that they don't care about you one oh. bit. So don't say they have this problem. It's not a problem. That's the life they have chosen. They just don't care about you. That's not a problem, Lily. Your marriage is the problem. That is the life. This is the problem. Sometimes what we are calling a problem is the life. You are the problem in their life. You should remove yourself. Oh. Yes. Anytime a person is serial, flirting, emotional, entertaining this and the other, they, they wish you were not in their life. They, they just caught up there with you. And a lot of people know it's because by the time you married this person, there were conflicts. 
they were not sure because of their family, they were not sure about the other thing, they were being hesitant, they were how do people formalize on and off relationship? They keep saying we had been on and off. Then you married when you're already breaking town. You're losing touch, disappearing. I thought now we are matured. I thought now we are serious. I thought I thought by the time and then energy is going to zero. It will never rise to hundred. By the time you are breaking up, it means the energy is dead. Unless the harmonious parting of ways because the seasons were not right yeah. and you weren't growing. Some two pre twenty fives met in university and they dated around for a month or two. They realize this, this is officially madness. <laughs> Good for them. <laughs> <laughs> they are mature enough. Yeah. To call it what it was. Yeah. There was peer pressure because everybody is doing it. Yeah. They admire each other. Yes. But they realize any time they, every day they are sorting costs, every day they are sorting a case, every day they are quarreling, they stress, they, they realize, mm -mm. Lily, high degree of stress in a relationship is not a normal up and down. Okay. It's a sign of incompatibility, immaturity, out of season, the wrong thing. Any time you are solving a conflict, crying every time, quarreling every time, and you see it's going and going and issue after issue, it's not a sign that we are, we are working on the relationship. No, you're in the wrong place. We get stuck in the thought that maybe I'm the problem, and so if I just fix myself, the relationship will be normalized. Yes. When you are not confident, your self-esteem is very poor, when you don't know, when you don't have a track of growth, it's really after you've grown for a while, you know I'm not all that messed up. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, this is not me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not all that horrible. Yeah. So when people are dating before they've grown to consciousness, okay. when you know how much digging you've done, you know you're not perfect, but you know the remaining part of growth. We said your partner will also be act like a catalyst for your growth because it's a, there's a set of your weaknesses that will be exposed within a union. Outside here, they are not visible. Mm. For example, how you can maintain a consistent communication. You know when you are single, you're used to a liberal life. Yeah. You sleep any time. Yeah. <laughs> you wake up when you want, cook when you want, and all that. Yeah. When you get into a relationship to maintain rhythm, conversation, hungry humility to listen to swallow your ego to hear negative uh, feedback without spoiling the whole day to forgive easily and go back to happiness those things will be tested within a relationship so mm -hmm. you are aware those things will be grown into the inside a relationship but nobody should be calling you oh you this trash with you no nobody would want you ah my friend i moved past that sorry yeah another sign of narcissism is a person praises you win you then they start trashing you who are they praising before Learn to observe that cycle. A person treasures you are so wonderful, and then and this could be the lady to the guy. Mm -hmm. All this admiration, all this, and then you get into a relationship. Suddenly, you are the worst thing that ever happened to their life. So, what are they doing there? A normal person will not stay even to say those things. When they realize you are a mistake, they will just leave. Yeah. So, why is a person clinging to your life while still calling you horrible, mm -hmm. useless? I regret you destroyed my life, and they are not working out. Oh, it's because you have a child. That's why I'm here. Are you married to the child? It's because I, mean, I still want to fight for this. Which marriage? With a trash? No. Narcissists are usually doing ex interchange of roles. Mm -hmm. Interchange of roles is they feel miserable and they know you are happy. They are making you feel what they feel so they can take away what you feel. They want to feel powerful, confident the way you're feeling and to give you the misery they are feeling. You can th think of it as a terrorist. They want to give you the terror they have, take away the life you have. I, I, at the risk of, you know, going into a very deep topic, but I know you can yeah. be able to summarize. Yeah. What's at the bottom of this insatiable feeling of terribleness? Arrested development. A person who did not develop. But even when I was a child, I never felt that terrible. So I No, you evolved. It's because you evolved. When you were a child, you were balanced and contented. Remember mm -hmm. the three causes of narcissism? Yes. Either an abandoned child or glorified child mm -hmm. who was made to feel like a kingpin or a queen or something. Mm -hmm. Or a person who has not healed from a pain, trauma, that there's no, they have not healed from. Or a person who has simply... Me we said you can be grown into narcissism by being praised into disproportionate, grotesque proportions. Usually geniuses yes. fall into that trap. Yes. And military and medicine uh -huh. and law. When you feel like you are elite. That elitism makes you think you are all this. And beautiful girls can fall into that from their beauty only for thinking they are this special. <laughs> yeah. So they expect all of you to 
So genius artists, high performing politicians, people who have anything that makes them feel they are superhuman. Okay. <laughs> mm. So they don't work on your humility, their reality. All right. Mm. So we are saying, you know, a person doesn't care totally at all when it is a repeated taking affection to others, but it is being excused. Why do they still want you in their life as a prop to keep their social life going, to keep family going, their name going, to keep their you are a prop. They are using you as a fixture for their life without giving you what you need. They are actually showing how they don't care by being with everybody else. And they keep denying we did not go far, that far to buy time to make you get so invested that you can't leave. Like narcissistic women know when a good guy has children, he can hardly live. It's very difficult. He can sacrifice his life to stay there until the children are grown. Yeah. Men have no insight that when they stay there, the child is getting scarred and confused yeah. and twisted. Yeah. He should leave to give the child an option. But that decision is very difficult. Mm. He just looks at the immediate. When you're parting, how will the children be interrupted? It does not look that. It doesn't look the long term. When I stay, how the child is choiceless. Mm. That must stay in this loveless home, chaotic home, high tension home, emotionally absent home, and they must be exposed into this narcissism. They will grow to either marry those kind of narcissists or become mm. this kind of narcissist. Then. We are saying some people can also be toxic. I mean, we are using narcissistic for that context of the symptoms you described. Yeah. Some people are toxic. You don't need the diagnosis. You know very well. Yeah. That's why we wrote a whole book on toxic relationships. Yes. Please get a copy of this book if you haven't already. It goes for a thousand bob. Um, and you can also just buy all these books. So what we're talking about, we're just scrapping the surface. But this book goes in depth about all those difficult relationships yeah. that yeah. we need to manage in exactly. our lives. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And some of them are past. Mm -hmm. We are trying to heal from them. Yes. Tells you how to heal from. Okay. And we took the healing as a topic. While we are so addressed here, the symptoms that we need to heal. Yes. So the first thing that they don't care at all is when you realize they're perpetually giving the place of specialness that belongs exclusively to you, okay. to other people. Yeah. And the second thing that people don't care is when they are unable to heal when they hurt you, when they're unable to heal you when they hurt you. They can't apologize, they can't come down, they can't take responsibility. They, they, you see, not hatred, people think the opposite of love is hatred, but you see indifference. The real enemy of affection is indifference. The real killer of love is not even hate or whatever, that is too far, is a don't care attitude. When people don't come down to say, I realize I hurt you, that when, 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 you, when they find you hurting, sometimes what we call silent treatment is a misappropriation of other behaviors that are necessary actually. Okay. Uh -huh. When it's a treatment, we are saying it's an aggressive using of withdrawal of affection to punish someone. Okay. Yeah. You are administering a tool. Yeah. <laughs> of torture yeah. <laughs> by removing the oxygen of love yeah. which is attention mm. to make them feel it mm. but sometimes you're not giving anybody silent treatment you're quiet because you're hurting so when they see you hurting because of what they did they accuse you of be going silent on them yeah. you can't be talking when you're being hurt deliberately so they go silent too anytime you yeah. protest and the person takes your protest as an offense and any time you try to bring a conversation over what they did, somehow it turns out to you. And you end up apologizing when you're the one who needed to be apologized to. You end up going down and feeling confused. You leave that room wondering what happened. You leave that conversation wondering. You end up just apologizing because it is spiraling. Some people just spiral the conversation out yeah. of control. Yeah. Just to avoid saying so. Just to avoid healing you. Some people are just incapable of owning up to their actions. This is so damaging and cancerous in terms of if we were to give a disease to the problem. This is so damaging. I wonder why we are so quiet about it. The first sign of a person who can build a love with you is that they can swallow their pride, their ego, and say, I realize I hurt you. I should, have, I should not have said that. Yeah. I'm sorry. That may seem small eh, yeah. until you interact with people and realize Somebody steps on your toes. Why are you putting your toes on the road? Like, can't you right. see? I'm working, even making me fall. They stepped on your toes. Right? You're even making me fall. You are. I'm, look at it. Look, you can't use your respect. Can't, can't. <laughs> we know those people. We know, you know them. Yeah. You're the one bleeding and you're the one to say sorry. Yeah. 
because I put my legs. No, you are tall, hurt the <laughs> sole of my foot. <laughs> <laughs> Your toe is hurting the sole of my you, foot. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you see how pervasive this problem is. Even when you see problem on the road, somebody obviously is on the wrong. Obviously okay, is on drivers. the wrong. Yeah. And although there they may be money and there may be no relationship. And sometimes the insurance says don't admit liability, just inform us. But some things are so clear, you can see there's no empathy. Mm -hmm. There's no understanding, no nothing. You get these people in relationships who, who would rather explode. Look for anything to reverse. Do you know why they go quiet? To cook for reasons. They avoid, I'm not ready to talk now. They're the ones who hurt you. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I can't talk about this now. And they're the ones who hurt you. Yeah. Now you're the one to chase after them, beg for a conversation. Because I know when they go quiet for long, you, you care, you're hurting. Them, they don't care. Oh. Another reason people go quiet on you is because they're doing rotation or dating. Oh, merry go round. <laughs> <laughs> they're still comparing many people. Hey. And they're now left to your side. They've gone to the other side. They're coming to you. Yes, they're but doing. But first they have to. Yeah. They've gone their ward round. They're <laughs> they <are out. laughs> the shift is on the other side now. <laughs> they're doing rounds. <laughs> <laughs> So sometimes people have married you, but they are not there with you. They are giving you silent treatment because they have gone to the other person now. Okay. okay. As we continue highlighting about narcissists, they cannot settle with one thing. They need constant stimulation because they are very void. You, the reason you work and go rest, because you have a life that fulfills you. You have a career that fulfills you. When you work there, you are really spent. You want to rest. Mm -hmm. They don't have that. Oh. They must have an addiction. They must have either sex or gambling or something. Affairs or serial cheating is very dopamine thrilling. So many, they will take to that. And that's why many of them have sexual dysfunctions. They have just abused their sexual side of life until it is so damaged. They need things. I don't know what pills, whatever, whatever. Not everybody needs that has this problem. But you're saying narcissists in particular have abused their psychology, their body, until they can't even perform normally. I, I could be wrong, but for this particular show, I feel like it's not just limited to narcissists. I think you'll also meet... Yes, I'm picking that narcissists because they are common, but you're saying there are people who don't care about you yeah. just because they may not be narcissists. Narcissists are big, and because people don't submit to diagnosis, you may not even diagnose them. We only give you that name to remove your hope. When you see this trait and this and this, yeah. stop trying to work on this thing. There is a name for that pathology. It's beyond control. Get out of it. That's why we usually use that word. But this problem of today is manifest with people whom you don't need any diagnosis. We okay. just need to know whether actually they don't care. Yeah. They just don't tell you that, but they don't care. Yeah. One is serial flirting. Mm -hmm. When it happened and it has repeated. Yeah. And it has repeated. It's not loud and explosive enough because you don't know how much they went. They deny how far they went, but you know it's possible. But mm. most times married people, by the time they're talking to other people sexually, they will have a sex in the first time, the first time they get. Don't flirt for fun. They don't. Flirting is knocking on doors. Any door opens, they go in. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that. Yes. They would entertain the conversation where they don't intend to have the action. Yeah. So don't be fooled. We are just talking. Don't be fooled, eh? Yeah. Don't be fooled. Yeah. Like somebody say, I'm, not, I'm just chewing. I'm not eating. Yeah. I won't swallow. <laughs> so what are you going to do? <laughs> Remember that. Okay. Don't be gaslighted. You're not a child. You're a grown-up. In fact, we said, when it comes to some things, don't wait for fire. Smoke is enough. Yeah, for sure. Because if you see the fire... It Smoke is enough. Yeah. You find what they did, uh, th th this, this uh, old lie, when you find, catch them in the, with the chats on the phone, it was my friend chatting with my phone to there. <laughs> a very lame <laughs> explanation. Yeah. But because people cannot admit, they must look for a scapegoat. So when you find a person who must always find a way to avoid owning up, healing what they have hurt, there's no point attempting. Do you see how absurd then it is to marry people because you got pregnant with them? It's absurd. <laughs>
we were thinking so that I don't get the child and I, so that I'm, I'm not away with my child. I let me marry the mother so that my society, I'm not called this, I don't want to be a single, I don't, you know. Yeah. Look at the whole body of compatibility issues that is at the backdrop. Mm. People perish for lack of knowledge. Eh? When you don't have knowledge, you can die for what you don't know. Yeah. Therefore, when you acquire knowledge, sometimes you're saving your life, honestly. It's true, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're saving your life. Mm -hmm. When you see a person who cannot tell you sorry. One guy told me his wife has not said sorry for the 11 years they've been together. The word sorry. So those are two anomalies. The wife and also the fact that the guy has stayed for 11 years yes. without ever being told He was sorry. not aware that. Because you are, you are actually convinced you are the one who's on the wrong. Yeah. Is after we talked, he began to say, ah, uh -huh. so by the way. Yeah. So sometimes it takes the scales to fall off, eh? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> this, this is why we need therapy. You know. Yeah, someone to just wake us up from our own infirmities. And you can, you can spend your life with this kind of swindle and your years go down the drain. Yeah. You can spend your life thinking, what did I do wrong? Where did I do wrong? What did I... And you be, you're convinced that you're so ch such a terrible person? Yeah. You're such a bad person? Yeah. And people can get away by demonizing you. Once you believe it, it becomes the thing. Yeah. Remember what you said, how to be sure that you don't get swindled for life? Maintain voices of reason in your life. Yes. Don't discard the people who used to be your mentors. You may not be in a mentorship relationship currently, but because you used to have a relationship that you knew each other. It's a person you can call and explain and they give you perspective. Yeah. Don't lose touch with those online communities that talk sense. Mm. Don't cut away your friends. Nobody should be taking a phone to quarrel with the people you have built over your life from the time you have been alive. How can somebody kick away your class 3 friend? When will you ever go back to class 3 to get friends again? How can somebody start quarreling your college colleagues? Mm. Your work means the first job you did. Some of those relationships are, are really capital. Mm. Those are the people who show up when you have junctions of life. When you have milestones of life, how, how are you handing somebody a phone just because you think you're in love? How is somebody quarreling people in your life, texting, interfering, coming all the way, and they don't know the relationship with that, with that person? Mm. There are people whom you have lost forever because the, whoever they call their lover contacted you with them, thinking you are chatting with Willie. Willie has got this psychotic girlfriend. Hey, 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 hey. So you chat thinking is Willie. Hey, Willie, how are you? Hey, so you prostitutes. You're the ones who are taking women. This is, don't touch. Will you block that number, say thank you very much. Yeah. By the time Willie is handing over us, his contacts, mm. to whoever is thinking came the other day. Yeah. <laughs> when this, this joke, somebody said, I can't come for lunch, I just had my baby today. And they, so she was sacrificing her 15 years friendship for a person who just came one day anyway, but it's okay. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> No. <laughs> okay. <So laughs> the kind of unreasonableness yeah. that you have, this is a child of God, but some people really are so new in your life three months. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you're sacrificing a 10 year journey? <laughs> Never hand over this phone to a malicious person. Yeah. Never. Mm. Not in the name of love. Like never even hand over the phone. <laughs> I mean, why you? The phone is not out of bounds. I'm not saying it's out yeah. of bounds. Yeah, I know. When you need to look something, you can look. Yeah. But you cannot be going through my contact checking. Why talk? I don't know. You're calling this quarreling. Don't. It's me and you. If it's not working, we part ways. Don't quarrel the people I, I'm. I'm journeying through life with. Yeah. When you're young and naive, you sacrifice your contacts until you realize later you've been cut away from all your social support mm -hmm. and you're essentially alone. You have nobody to talk to. Yeah. This phone is your world. You have therapists there. You have friends there. Your mentors there. That phone is your world. It is. You know you're in touch when you have each other's phones. Yeah. Okay, there's that granny who may not have a phone and you know where to find them. But your question is, when you talk to that girl, tell her to come and greet me. Yeah. Your contacts matter. Yeah. <laughs> they matter. Yeah. We are saying, you know they don't care ab at all about you when they cannot come as far as saying, I was wrong there. Mm. That may seem simple, but start doing your research. You see how people cannot say sorry. So rather lose you. Mm. All right? So when people value their ego more than they value this relationship, yeah. you know you, they don't care at all, and you're just there as a prop. 
The third and last one we want to discuss because it give you so, for it give you solutions mm -hmm. that they don't care. Again, you know people care when they are fitting you where they are mm -hmm. and where they are going. So you know they don't care when they don't include you in their future plans. Oh. When you are only in the talking stages and you have not become exclusive, mm -hmm. you don't expect them to include you in their plans there. Mm -hmm. But if you have become exclusive and you hear they are telling people about their future, you hear they are talking, they are they are making decisions that matter mm. by consulting everybody else except you. Mm. You hear how they are talking about what is happening in the future. And yet, they, 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 I thought I found the woman I want to marry. But the way she keeps talking about the way she wants to go to Italy. And there is no Italy in our conversations around our future. Yeah. And the way the US, there is no US. And she's, she's putting so able to apply Australia. And there is no that kind of con And we thought we are talking about marrying. I've seen men make these mistakes in particular. Mm -hmm. Because you don't want to appear like you're interfering with her life. You don't watch that she's not adjusting her life to accommodate you. Mm. Men ex exist in two extremes. Mm -hmm. who, those who don't care, totally don't care. Those who care, care too much. So these brothers who care, care so much about her that she doesn't care about himself, that she's not actually adjusting life to accommodate you. Mm. You said you're very liberal, you will uh, allow her to continue building her career, but you did not check whether she's prepared to occupy the space of wife. Mm. You want a woman who of lords come, comes down her camel, dismounts her camel to come down to meet Isaac. Mm. People are m mounting their camels, going solitary. Now when we meet, we dismount, we plan a new journey on ourselves. We are not dismantling our dreams. Mm. We are saying we humble ourselves now to weave a common story yeah. with our dreams now. We are weaving and we are weaving. Somebody saying in primary school or in school they taught us like solar system forms a circle rings and the sun is at the center and the one ring the inner ring the other is the third ring there are nine rings so they are moving around okay different speeds but we understand perfect circle each yeah when they actually show you in 3d how solar system moves yeah the sun itself is moving yeah the sun is moving in a group of stars that are also moving mm. and now every planet is rotating fast they're also revolving around this thing that is also moving to keep speed with the water so the it's so complex. Yeah. Marriage is like the solar system. You can't continue your motion, neat motion as it was, yeah. after we become a thing. Wow. You have to now, we have to adopt the similar movement, all of us. Yeah. Compare how many geniuses are working as we sit here. You are sitting on an earth and you look like you are still, isn't it? Yes. This earth is moving in about three motions mm. concurrently. Yes. This earth is traveling across space. <laughs> alongside the sun. Yes. <laughs> this sun is moving around that sun. This, uh, this earth is also rotating mm. along its own axis. How many motions are those? And you're not shaking. Yeah. <laughs> you, you still tell me you don't believe in miracles? With all that? <laughs> that you can be steady and you can not alone drive on the surface of that earth mm. that is moving three different dimensions itself mm. and you're not also moving. Yeah. If, if by just any time you get any insight into reality, you recognize God the first thing. There must be a designer here. Yeah. Marriage and union was supposed to work in such a miraculous way that you don't stop your life, I don't stop mine. The beginning of we does not mean the absolution of me. We just start me and you, we form we while you're still there. I'm there, the tricycle circles, that the tricycle company has that logo. Yeah. The Audi circles are like four, but the tricycle are like three. Yeah. So there's one in between, then us there and us there. So yours is exiting. Maybe we have created another one where there's a common ground, but you still be deep in. You know a person cares only when now they have brought their circle to merge with us. They don't get swallowed, but they don't remain totally isolated. We have a common ground we have formed, and we have started a motion across the solar system, so to speak. <laughs> now along our path now, mm -hmm. trailing our path now, moving our way now. You see a person when they incorporate this relationship in their future, in their tomorrow, in their life. Once you become exclusive and this person has decided to marry brothers, let me keep saving my brothers because they don't know how to read women. Women are very enigmatic. She smiles, I love you too, my God, you're so romantic. He settles there. Okay. <laughs> Check whether this woman had in her mind that she wants to get married. If she was not planning to get married, she's only sucking your nectar because you are available. The women who don't adjust your life because she agreed to date you. And you continue pursuing her and convincing her that she should get married, that she should decide, that should, we should, we should, 
Then your friends advise you a very wicked advice. Make her pregnant. So now you have created a permanent entanglement with a reluctant woman. You're finished. You're finished. You cre- permanent entanglement with a woman who, was, who had not made her mind to settle. Lily, there is no man who is charming enough to turn your mind to get married when you are not planning to get married. True or false? True. You can enjoy the company. Yes. Vivi is a good salesperson. <laughs> he, <does. laughs> he makes me laugh. They really pitch. <laughs> they, with, and I hope men understand that. Lily has been giving clues what moves women. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. She's been giving clues. Yeah. Women are not that complicated. No. But I don't know why we go all the way to the cloud. You raise me up. Do you know I can just make jokes and Lily will remember me more than all your poetry. And all your gifts. <laughs> I think guys geek out over gifts. Oh my. When it would take it would be it would cost them nothing. They really go out and out to overspend. Yeah. And the woman is already uncomfortable. Yeah. Okay, there's a place for gifts. Eh? There's a place for gifts. And then I go maybe to the mechanic and he makes me laugh to tears. And I, even <sighs> if I don't fall in love with him. You know? enjoy that interaction more? Yes, yes. But these are high cost. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, no problem with the high cost. Uh, you know, we are not... Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and so those who have been wondering why I would buy a high car and she sits on me with the other guy, the mechanic. Because the mechanic attends to her feelings. He's just, he's just available to chat, make her happy, relax her mood, re- yeah. check how she's doing. Today you don't look very happy. She notices a shoe. You don't is that because you think you provided material things. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Lily's dropping clues. These are not personal. They are general to women. Oh. <laughs> don't. Serious less when you're serious less. <laughs> serious does not mean melancholic. Yeah. It means committed but yes. happy. Yes. <laughs> That's what serious means. Yes. You know they don't care about you at all when they're enjoying the present without including you in their tomorrow okay yes okay solution solution you know the solution Mm -hmm. don't care about people who don't care about you yeah do not include people who don't include you Mm. even if you love them love is not enough life requires investment if they are not investing as much as you're investing your love only makes you vulnerable to be swindled Mm. yes Okay, thank you for listening. That was such a good, good show. Let us know in the comments below if you have something that you would add. How would you know that somebody doesn't care for you? That's it from us. Bye. This is the Benjamin Zulu Global. Welcome our viewers from all over the world to the home of the heart matters. We're converging to learn together because when you know better, you can do better. And a better life is what we all want.